Um, what's up, everybody? It's Emorja, and we're back for another segment of ours highlights. Is we're already trying to get ourselves together now. What? It's okay. We just flow with us. Kevin, tell these people who you are. Where you from, man? What's going on, E? Thank you so much for having me on the show. I am uber excited to be here uh, yeah. to talk to you guys. I'm Kevin Marshall. I'm an author and attorney, and I'm originally from Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, an attorney too. Oh, so, yeah. so you so you actively practicing right now. I am actively practicing law right now. Pray for me. Okay. Like, Listen, like, I get it. Especially with all that happened uh, yesterday. Somebody may need you. Um, Listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot going on. <laughs> it's been a lot going on, but yes, I, I um but I do corporate law too. So I do okay. like corporate transactional stuff. So I do a lot of contract drafting. I represent uh my client who um is in gaming. I represent us in terms of intellectual property, uh, contracts with different vendors. So yeah. my job is kind of like ever changing every day, but my passion is definitely in writing. I love law, yeah. but I love that artistic expression that I get with writing. That's what's up, man. And so now where'd you grow up? I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. Awesome. Uh, right. Now I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been living in Atlanta for almost 11 years. You're in Atlanta? Yeah, ATL. I should have known that. Okay. Well, ATL. we need y'all to wear y'all mask over there. How about that? ATL. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Hold on. I, I will not be taking. Let me, let me take off. <laughs> I'm not dealing with any Atlanta slander because listen. when people think of Georgia, they think of Atlanta. Our I know. Mayor, it's not so bad, man. Keisha Lance Bottoms set things. Now, I don't. I haven't been in the club. Keisha did her job. Anything. But, you know, situations happen where, yeah. you know, people override her I know. in law and um you know so it is what it is but shout out to Keisha yeah. I'm trying yeah, to listen, Keisha's I camera, like man. I like it for the past like couple of years black folks been stepping up man um I'm, I'm talking about from like yesterday and then to Stacey Abrams and to Keisha Lance Bottoms it's like yeah and we still have more to go um but some people are still going to be upset about it but it's okay because we're going to keep the ball rolling anyhow Listen, um, I, I posted a picture on Instagram today and basically said we still going to shine like no matter yeah. what the energy is in the country. I think us as black people, as people of color, yeah. uh, as minorities, whether that be black, brown, you know, uh, women, I think it's we don't have next. We have now, even mm -hmm. in terms of the upcoming administration with Joe Biden. I mean, there's so many opportunities for diversity in the cabinet, the people that he's nominated to be a part of his cabinet. Yeah. I went on on the his website today, his transition team website, and it's almost like a rainbow in terms of all of the the people that you see. You see women, see you see brown people, um, all of these people that are gonna be in these powerful positions. Yeah. And I think that really represents what America is today in terms of us having our own set of goals or values, but us keeping that American dream and yeah. that if we work hard and, and we're good people, that good things will happen to us and we'll all have that opportunity at success. So yeah. I'm excited about this new administration. Yeah, I mean, if anything, I mean, there's excitement, but there's also hope. Uh, so let's just sort of talk about your book for a second. So what made you write this book, man? So my book is entitled Hella Hopeful. It's 31 Daily Affirmations to Find Hope. And it's a really interesting story. I, I don't know how long we have, so I'll give you guys the you quick version of it, you, you know? But uh, I was diagnosed with COVID-19 early um, last year. I was diagnosed with it in March. Like we were in double digits in Atlanta whenever mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with it. Well, so that's why it's always, new. yeah, it was super new. And the interesting part about that is that, you know, I wasn't one of those individuals who was, you know, being reckless, that was being out, that was was going out. I mean, it was new, so we could still technically do anything we wanted yeah. to at that point in time. Yeah. But there was an outbreak at my job, and that's where more than likely I, I contracted it from. Uh, some employees, one employee had went out of town, went out of the country and traveled back in, and we think that's Ooh. where it kind of happened. But I was in a very interesting situation whereby I found out that uh, I was tested positive for COVID from our human resources department. And she called me, she was like, hey, Kev, I got something to tell you because our job ordered us test. Yeah. And she was like, hey, you know, you're positive for COVID-19. <clears throat> and that was one of the first times I ever had to deal with something like that. So later on that day, I got a call from the laboratory who had conducted the COVID-19 test. And the laboratory, you know, the doctor was basically saying, hey, this is so new. We don't really know what this is. Um, 
And I said, hey, do you have any advice for me? Like, what would you tell me so that I could recover from this yeah. disease? Yeah. At that point in time, all we were seeing was death everywhere in I the know. media. Um, and it was pretty much a death sentence if you had contracted it. So I said, hey, I'm going to beat this and I want you to tell me what I need to do. And she told me to stay hydrated. And at that point in time, I, I don't know about y'all, if somebody tells you to stay hydrated after you been <laughs> diagnosed with something life-threatening, you can lie, okay. Be funny. You should have some ginger ale. You know, ginger ale kills everything. Thank you. That's <laughs> what the first thing I got is some ginger ale. Right. Shoot. But um, seriously, like, so when she told me that, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. But I took those right. words and I said, stay hydrated. And I, I thought about what that meant for me. I could hydrate myself on the negativity that I saw in the news. I could hydrate myself on the death toll that was steadily climbing and increasing. Or I could hydrate myself on hope. And I chose yeah. to hydrate myself on hope, on love, on science, yeah. uh, which was saying that it was something that you could recover from. So mm -hmm. at that point in time, I had looked at my phone and I had always been a writer since I was a little kid. Okay. But at that specific moment, I looked at my phone at all of the affirmations that I wrote to myself. Because I used to write affirmations, you know, just throughout the day about strength, about love, about hope. Yeah. And in that moment, I felt like God was telling me to put all of these things together and compile it into a, a book. And whenever I got that, that idea to do it, I was like, well, God, I'm worried about myself right now. Yeah. You know, yeah, I don't exactly. this I'm not I don't have I can't write a book. I need to be in the house. I need to be resting. I need to be sleep. And I was like, well, I you know, I think that you should, I want you to publish this book at this specific point in time. And at that point in time, I didn't know how long I was going to be here. I didn't know what the outcome yeah, yeah. of that would be. So I got started and I just put all of those affirmations together and it came out to hella hopeful. Okay. Is, and you started this during the COVID. So you started this in March. I did. And you, you pumped out some work in just a couple of months, man. But you know, what's so funny. I had a lot of this stuff already done. That's why I said, okay. I think it was just the the right time to do it because it was yeah. a lot of the text that I had written to myself that mm. I never knew that I was going to share and I think you know not to get too preachy I'm not a preacher but just to sometimes you'll be in a situation where you already have something prepared and you won't know what it's I for or what's going to do that. and it literally it'll align and all make sense in yeah. that moment so when least expected exactly Man, that's crazy. And what is your, I don't know, this may be hard for you, but what is your favorite, mm, what's, a, what's your favorite affirmation? If you had two favorite affirmations in your book, what would they be? Ooh. Okay, I got mine already. I'm gonna see what you got. Let me see, let me see. <laughs> so my first one, I have a couple of them, honestly, but okay. my first one is hope and love, which is the first affirmation. Yeah. And I made it the first affirmation for a reason. Like it's, I think sometimes we as people struggle with self-acceptance and self-love. Certainly. So I wanted that to be the start of the book because no matter who you are, where you come from, God loves you. And I wanted that to be the central theme throughout the book. And I wanted yeah. to start off the book with love. Yeah. So the first affirmation, which is the first chapter, is hope and love. So that's, a, I think it's a determinative way to start the book by yeah. professing that you love yourself at the start of the journey through Hella Hopeful. Okay. And my second one would be hope and location. I love hope and location ah, yes, because it's saying that in the next season that we're about to go into, we're not going to have to try to do anything like blessings are going to find us. You know, obviously we have to work it out. We have to do our work for it, but opportunities yeah. are just going to come to us um, wherever we are. So hope Very and love cool. and hope and location. I love it, man. See mine. Um, so around the time, whenever I got this, of course, it was during the early parts of COVID, I had just finished the song, uh, He'll Be With You. And at the end of the song, I tagged in Never Alone, uh, the hymn. And so when I was reading this one day, uh, on actually page 17, day 12, it says, you know, I rest easy knowing that God is always by my side and that I am never alone. I was like, ah, uh. I said, okay, I said, perfect. That one right there. And then I got another one. Actually, I highlighted quite a bit. I'm a big highlighter. So I'm going to just sort of go, uh, just pick, oh, I will spread love and light throughout the day, remembering that there is always a reason to smile. I uh, love another, hope and yeah, smile too. Like the other one is hope and boundaries. That's another one. Cause I'm like, listen, um, I, will, I must set realistic boundaries, boundaries and expectations for my relationship because sometimes people don't understand that boundaries actually saves relationships, uh, just as much as they can hurt them as well. 
Right. So yeah, saying no and just putting up borders and keeping your your peace space uh, really does a lot. And people hopefully, I, I I'll, I'll say this with COVID, we've understood that the six feet boundary is certainly something that keeps us safe. Uh, but even within our personal life, I still think that six feet or six inches, whatever you want to call it, is still necessary as well too. <laughs> I agree with you so much. Yeah. And when I was writing Hope and Boundaries, you know, one of the reasons why all of the, the chapters start with hope is because I think hope is kind of a measuring stick. Yeah. Like we look at situations and say, I hope to get here or hope to get mm -hmm. there. Well, yeah. me for my relationships, whether that be, you know, romantic relationships or friendships, my relationship, my hope is to get to the point where I set these firm boundaries as to what I deserve, what my friends deserve and what I'm going to give them. Yeah. And in order to do that, I think there needs to be clear expectations in terms of boundaries as well, yeah. because that can help all of us make sure that we have healthy happy relationships so yeah. i love what you said about that about yeah, boundaries man. oh certainly and like who are some of your mentors like what kind of books do you read I, so i read so many different books i it, it was really crazy because i found out the news and i don't know when this is going to air but yesterday eric jerome dickey passed away which was a really huge uh black author and he mm. wrote you know really dope books i loved him as an author um I love, I love poetry and hopefully one day I'll publish a book of poetry because that's something that I've been working on for years as well in terms okay. of compiling my ideas of poetry and it's some really trippy stuff okay. uh, that I, that I want to publish. So okay. yeah, so poetry, uh, obviously Maya Angelou, I love her work as well, but currently I've been reading a book on real estate, which is really good. I can't think of the name off the top of my head and outwitting the devil is actually a really good book. That I, I have just started. heard of that one actually. So good. Outwitting the devil is amazing. It's an instant favorite. Okay. Okay. I'm going to have to go check that one out. And so of course, you know, we have books and we also have music. So we want to just sort of shift it for a little bit as our last question, like, who are some people that you listen to? Who's on your playlist? Uh, you know what? I am a super diverse person when it comes to music. Uh, I love all music. Uh, I love I love trap music. That's fine. Uh, so out of the, the, the new people. Oh, look, I'm always going to keep it real. I'm always going to be honest. <laughs> so out of the new people, I love I love Lil Baby. I like his new, uh, like his older stuff more than his new stuff. Okay. Okay. I, love... I just got into him. I love Lil Baby. But I like, but you know, I live in Atlanta too. So I love all the like Atlanta artists. Yeah, you got y'all, y'all have your own little click over there. Right. Just like but Florida, I, same way. <laughs> right. But I also love Kiki Wyatt. She's an amazing vocalist to Kiki. me. Yo, Kiki is always. Uh, and then especially seeing what she's been doing with her car, like in the past, you know, three to four years, whatever. She, she, her, her artistry is, is, I can't compare it to anybody else. She's her own thing. She's so uh, dope. Yeah. She's, She's crazy though, dope. but she good. <laughs> you know what's so funny? I think that Kiki Wright is misunderstood. I think she has a big heart. You know, oh, and, oh, us, yeah. and you're a Leo too, right? Mm. You know, I don't think she's a Leo, but I can understand like passion and, and oh, love certainly. and being misunderstood as a Leo. So I think yeah. she's misunderstood, but I, I, I hope that and she still has time but i hope that i wish she would have used her talent um to reach more people because i think I she has you. the voice and the gift to be able to do that and she's very diverse with it as well too yeah. uh, she can tap into the r&b world and and you know with kurt cardinal the gospel world is too mm -hmm. um and i think she could be poppy as well one of the albums that i'm listening to currently um is G gabby barrett she's a country singer I've never um, heard of her. I'm yeah, she's new. She um she just released a country album. It's her first album. It's entitled Goldmine. I've had that on replay uh huh. lately as well. So I'm I love country, I love R and B, rap, trap. Yeah. I try to appreciate the art and everything. Okay. Hey, of course. Listen, man. Um, black people, we got so many sides to us um, when it, as it comes to music like there is no one version of us man and you know what everything has there's there's black influence in all types of music mm -hmm. and i think that um we've given so much to all of the arts whether that be music whether that be film whether that be dance yes. i think we've given so much of ourselves to all of these platforms and you know one i think it's time that we get recognition for it but two mm -hmm. i think that it's important for us to, to understand as well that we are the culture. A lot of stuff that we've started 
it's mainstream culture at the moment it and, and will be for a long time to come. Always so. will be. Listen, man, please. Cultural appropriation is real. Uh, just as much as cultural appreciation is real. But people just have to understand and recognize the difference between the two. Uh, See, he's trying to get me in trouble. Y'all hear this? That's on the the episode. We'll do it later. (laughs) Let me ask you this. I don't know if I can ask you questions, but I want to know what you're listening to as well. Uh, What am I listening to? All right. So I I recently, I was at the gym, and I heard um, heard this one song by a group called, starts with the S. Uh, Oh, gosh. Uh, The guy who was a part of Arrested Development started a group. I think it's called Speech. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. So uh, I listen, listen to them. And of course, you know, my Lauren Hill, still my, you know, DOS effects, uh, you know, listen to uh, NWA. And then this, this is like my workout stuff. Uh, okay. But outside of that, of course, you know, I have my NDRE, my John Legends, my Smoky Norfolk's, my, uh, I can go from that to Albertina Walker to Yellow Pain. So I, I'm, I'm just, I'm all over the place, man, because I know me. When I hear a song, I'll get stuck on it. And sometimes I don't always branch off to other things. So I got to take like a hard turn in order to get there. So I, as I'm in the gym, that's my place to experiment. Because otherwise, I'm going to listen to Kirk Franklin all day. And I'm like, nah, there's much more out there besides that. Okay. What is one of your favorite songs? <sighs> no, you can't ask me that. Uh, <laughs> that's always one. a hard question. I don't one know. of them. Just one. One of my favorite songs, um, hands down, will always be Dear God by Smokey Norfolk. Period. Okay. Okay. Yep. One uh-huh. of mine, it's, it's going to be so random. And for me, there's some really great vocalists out there. Like I love the vocal ability that artists have. I love your voice. I think you have a, a beautiful gift oh, thanks, of a voice. Yeah. Uh, I love that, but I also love artists for what they represent as well. Yeah. Like one of my favorite songs is When You're Ready uh, by Justine Sky. Have you heard of Justine Sky before? I'm writing it down now. Justine Sky is a brilliant new talent. She released an EP and When You're Ready is one of the songs that's on that EP. And I love songs that really make you look deep in terms of your interpretation of them and what, mm. what they mean for you. Um, yeah. So that's really one of my favorite. I want you to listen to it and let me know what, yeah. you, what you think about the, the lyrics. Yeah. I'm a lyrics person too, so. Okay, I mean, of course, poetry, author, lawyer, um, words are definitely important. So listen, I get it. <laughs> yes. Hey, uh, tell everybody where they can get your stuff, man, how they can follow you, all that good stuff. Absolutely. Okay, so, hey, I want to let you guys know, one of the things, this is my merch that I have on here. Yeah, it is. Um, my emblem is the yellow heart. And real yep. quick, quick story, uh, I was in church New Year's Eve of 2019 going into 2020. I closed my eyes at mi- uh, midnight. I opened my eyes and all I saw was yellow. So from there, I didn't know what the color yellow was going to mean or what I was going to do. I didn't know I was going to publish a book in May of that year. Uh, so I was like, hey, well, I saw the color yellow. Let's go with the yellow heart. And that's going to be a, my book cover, too. It's going to be in yellow. Black and yellow, black so, and all gold. Okay. Hey, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, the yellow heart symbolizes hope. Okay. Uh, one of my friends wrote back. I was talking about hope one day um, on Instagram. Um, and one of my friends commented with a yellow heart and I was like, well, if a red heart can mean love, a yellow heart can mean hope. Mm. So Kevin has hope is my Instagram handle, um, on Instagram and Twitter. The yellow heart is my emblem and my merch is available at www.kevinhashope.com. And it also includes my merchandise and also a course that I launched last year too, to help aspiring authors. It's called 60 Day Author Online Crash Course. And that course, I'll tell you everything I did to publish my first book, Hella Hopeful, in 60 days. Now, obviously I had a lot of it written before because I wrote it, but it actually gives you guys practical tips to become an author and it's like super cheap. So yeah. Listen, y'all better invest. Um, Yes. Yeah, definitely invest in that. Well, listen, man, I certainly appreciate you for coming on and talking to us, man. Thank you, brother. Listen, I'm so proud of you guys. Um, I, it's a blessing just to be welcomed here. And I thank you for taking the time to speak with me, man. I had a great time. Hey, that's why we're here, man. All right, everybody. That's it for tonight. Y'all have a good one.